so I actually met my girlfriend in Thailand on the first leg of my trip. Mm -hmm. She's from here. She actually lives in Whistler. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> oh, she's amazing. And, um, I came here, started living with her and then obviously I wouldn't go home every Christmas. So I'd spend Christmas at her place. And it was like, everyone sat around the dinner table, like everyone, like <laughs> sisters, mom, dad, sometimes they'd have family friends. And I was like, this is so strange, but I kind of like it. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's really interesting. Right. I was like, wow, this is, that was, that was an, another big sort of turning point for me because I was like, this is super different. But yeah. yeah, yeah, you really don't start to notice until you start like partaking in, in other people's lives at like an older age, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Because even when I was younger, I don't know how much I noticed. Like, you didn't really spend that much time as a younger kid with other families, or, like I didn't at mm. least. Um, but yeah, as you get older and start meeting new people and really like taking part in other people's lives, I think you start to see a lot of differences, obviously. Yeah yeah and it's it's cool i think it's uh it's good to see it's good to know where you come from and like it's an eye opener it, well i don't know about for you but for me it was a huge eye opener mm -hmm. it's like yeah. oh i kind of see why it's why it's interesting when you realize you can come from a place of instead of having it attached to emotion or having your blinkers on mm -hmm. you can come to another place and compare it and you're like this is very interesting i wonder if this influenced my behavior in the past <laughs> Which is good. Like I, 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 I should never say. I think it's a fine line between blaming certain behaviors on your past, and then like acknowledging them and being like, "Oh, okay, maybe I was behaving this way because of it. I don't have to be behave that way anymore." Yeah, right? there's a difference between using it as an excuse and just like being aware of it and moving forward. Yeah, exactly. And I think I think that's really key here. And to be honest, with a lot of mental issues i think it's realizing why you're behaving a certain way or what's affecting you in a certain way and then trying to move past it mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things that can help with that i mean but essentially it has to come from you first that realization has to come and that realization that you have the power to change that you mm -hmm. can't change what happened but you can change your reaction to it you know mm -hmm. yeah exactly and that's that's a super powerful feeling mm -hmm. you can do it yeah <laughs> but yeah there was there was certainly a lot of things that helped me along the way so i mean we mentioned martial arts briefly mm -hmm. in the intro arts martial arts was huge for me for more reasons than one so when i was younger um going back to when we were in spain i was never really an athletic kid i was always picked last for sports teams very anxious about certain things so I never really liked in partaking in team sports in England, football or soccer is very big, right? And I'm just useless at it. I'm so bad. <laughs> I'm the worst Englishman to talk to about soccer. I don't follow teams. I'm really shit at it, like very <laughs> shit. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and it, it all stemmed from all this anxiety of like being picked last, last for sports teams. I didn't like people laughing at me. I didn't like exposing myself or like looking kind of weak or not being good at something. So I just wouldn't do it. And mm -hmm. it wouldn't just be soccer, it'd be anything. So I would much rather just close myself in my room, play video games um, and not partake in any of those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So growing up, obviously when you don't exercise a lot and that's your main pastime, you end up carrying a bit of extra weight. I think by the time I was... 12 i was considered like morbidly obese severely overweight in the uk so it was quite a lot and uh i remember like i was just i didn't want to do any of these things but the games i played were like beat em up games like tekken did you ever play tekken i know the game but i've never played it that game's so good i used to play <laughs> a lot of tekken um and i used to love all the old martial arts films so i loved the matrix i loved rocky i loved all of these action films and i remember one day my mom was like oh you should do something like that you should take up like taekwondo or karate and i was like absolutely not i'm not doing that and then one day uh, <laughs> absolutely not yeah <laughs> i just keep yeah. watching it <laughs> yeah and then uh one day my mom decided that that was it. She didn't want that sort of life for her kid. And she, I remember she just 
pulled me into the car kicking and screaming, dropped me off at this karate dojo in Spain and uh, threw me through the doors and was like, don't let him out. I'm going to pick him up in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, was sure. I was like, I can't believe she's doing this. But uh, I actually really enjoyed it. I sat down for the first 10 minutes in a sulk and then the, uh, the professor was just having none of it. And he was like, you're going to join in out of respect. And I joined in and I loved it. I was mm-hmm. hooked. It was, um, it was incredible. It was like the first time I'd ever done something where like I was completely zoned in because I had to be. I was working all these things I'd never worked before. I was getting this endorphin high. I was learning how to move my body and structured movements. And it was incredible. And I was mm-hmm. like, and I'd seen like, I have you watched The Matrix? You know, when I've, you know, I've watched it, but it's been a long time. It's pretty badass. He puts on his kimono and then he's like got his belt on and he learns Kung Fu. And I'm like, this is cool shit. So when I put on the kimono, I was like, this is really cool. And I really <laughs> enjoyed it. So I, uh, I kept doing that in Spain up until probably around 14. And then I came back to England, uh, did some more karate for a bit. And then that slowly evolved into the more aggressive martial arts. So I did a bit of point fighting, kickboxing, uh, competed a little bit when I was younger. And mm-hmm. then that evolved into full contact kickboxing. Uh, stopped a little bit throughout university because money was quite tight. And then I came back to it when I was traveling, actually. I did some Muay Thai in Thailand for two months. Mm-hmm. And now I train here at a gym called Universal MMA just in North Vancouver. And uh, I took up jujitsu, which is one of the most humbling things ever. I'm, I mean, the first time I tried it, I think it was he was a 15-year-old who I had like 30 pounds on. And he submitted me like maybe three or four times in five minutes <laughs> what on earth is going on and i thought i was a bit of hot shit right i've been training yeah. for a little while and uh yeah i, I couldn't believe it 